Maniac and hello, H2O's, Roller Bros, and Responsible Lobsters alike. I'm your guide, Q. Welcome back to another Neckbeard story. This is a pretty long and intense one, but it's totally worth it. Also, if you're not aware, yesterday I did a live stream where I looked at a bunch of wikiHow guides, like how to get girls. I think one of them was like how to get a girl to like you on Facebook. They were incredibly entertaining, and I think it's honestly one of the best things that I've done on this channel. I also think it holds up pretty decently as a video in, in and of itself, like not just a live stream replay. So I'll link that in the comments down below if you're interested, but for now, let's get into this story. Childhood friend Neckbeard went psycho when I got engaged. Hi, let me start off by saying that I'm not a native English speaker, so I might make some grammatical errors, and I apologize in advance. I made this throwaway Reddit to hide my identity. This is a really long story. I made it as short as I could, so I might have missed some details. This story started way back in 2009. I was 12 and I was in 6th grade. I started playing this game on Friendster, a very popular social networking site at the time. I won't say the name of the game, as it was a relatively unknown game and the community was so small that everyone knew everyone even up to this day. This game had a forum which I frequently participated on. This is where I met Mike. Mike is a pretty popular on the forums. He was almost always online and replies to every post. It was hard not to miss him. He was extremely nihilistic, and being an emo 12-year-old myself, I related to that. At the time, not anymore, thank heavens. By the time I was in high school, Friendster was abandoned, and almost everyone I knew shifted to Facebook. It was pretty normal to accept and add everyone, because it was cool to have many friends on Facebook. Unknown to me, one of the people I either added or accepted was Mike. He didn't really interact to any of my posts until I posted a picture of me for the first time. I was 14 here. It was a selfie of me and my first electric guitar. He was one of the few people who liked it and commented on it. He initiated a conversation on Messenger instantly after, and that's how we became friends. He became one of my best friends despite only knowing him online and not even knowing what he looked like. We would usually exchange songs to listen to and animes to watch. It was all fine until I had my first boyfriend. He started acting strange. I was 16 and both he and my BF were 18. He started flirting with me. I didn't know what he was trying to do at the time because I was basically a clueless virgin, but I still find it weird because he would often get upset when I didn't reply to him instantly. He would constantly flood me with messages. Nothing weird really, usually he would just spam and hit random keys and send them until I reply. That is really weird, I'm not gonna lie. My BF at the time noticed this when we were hanging out at his house. It annoyed him so much that he asked me why Mike was always like that and I told him I have no idea. My BF had enough one day, and I told him to read our conversation if he wanted to. This infuriated him more because it was really obvious that Mike was flirting with me, and I'm completely oblivious. He was sending me messages like, I'm going to bite you, pinches your thighs, and I had no idea how sexual they were at the time. This prompted my BF to tell me to stop talking to Mike, and so I did. When my BF and I broke up, I slowly started to reply to Mike's messages again. This became a cycle because both of my exes told me to stop talking to Mike. It didn't make any sense to me until my second boyfriend told me that Mike was attracted to me and some of the stuff he was saying to me was inappropriate. Sometime in my second relationship, I deleted my Facebook and made a new one. Mike added me on this one, but I declined the request. Fast forward to when I was 19, I was single and was traveling a lot. So we are now like seven years after these two people have met. Just wanted to point that out. I post regularly on my Instagram. One day, a mutual on Instagram DM'd me. It was Mike. I lost most of my friends the previous year, so I was trying to be friendly with everyone, and we started talking daily again. One day, Mike asked me to meet up. I didn't know what he looked like even when I knew him for almost seven years, so I agreed since my university is just 30 minutes away from the area we're meeting up in. I told him to pick me up at the bus stop because I'm unfamiliar with the place, and also the place is known to be extremely crowded. I told him what I wore, black jeans and my university hoodie, and he knew what I looked like so it'll be easy for him to spot me. He also told me what he was wearing, a band shirt and denim jeans. The moment I got off the bus, this huge guy hugged me from behind, and I was frozen for a few seconds until I realized it was him. 
He was your stereotypical neckbeard. He was a huge guy about 5'11", I was 5 foot nothing, on the chunky side, wasn't wearing a fedora, but he does have a puby neckbeard. I'm not a fan of any type of beard, so I'm not really fond of it. I had a cold so I couldn't smell him, whether he smelled or not is still unknown to me. We sat down in the park and talked about random things. I'm extremely introverted, so I didn't make eye contact, and I didn't talk that much. But every time I spoke, I could feel him staring at my face, specifically at my mouth. I feel very conscious, and I stopped talking because of this. He started asking me sexual questions, like how I felt when I did the thing of badness for the first time. And was my ex's ding-dong big, if I liked giving head, etc. I was visibly upset by these questions, but he was so eager to know. When I told him I wouldn't answer any of his questions, he would yell it loudly so everyone in the park is looking at us. This made me uncomfortable, so I just answered them despite almost crying in public. It was like a joke to him, and he would laugh every time I'd show signs of being uncomfortable. To stop him from asking any more questions, I asked him to go to a nearby mall. We went to the music store, and it was worse. Dude was asking and touching every instrument in the room with his greasy hands, and the shop clerk was following him around looking like he was ready to kick us out any minute. I've never felt secondhand embarrassment this bad in public. I wanted to go home so bad, but Mike won't let me because it's just 2 p.m. I told him I had a midterm exam the next day, so he told me he'll let me go on one condition. He wanted us to go to this photo booth and take pictures. I was desperate to go home, so I complied. Luckily, I managed to get out of there without getting molested. After that meeting, I talked to him less. I wanted to cut him off completely, but he was telling me he was so depressed when I was in a relationship with my exes and when I cut him off my social media. This was effective because I know how it feels to lose friends, and I didn't want anybody to feel the same way. I just talked to him less and less every day until I met my current BF. This got worse when I became engaged with my BF. He would call me on Messenger and I'd decline it, hoping that it would make him stop. Of course, it didn't. One time he called me while I was in class. I was extremely bored, so I made it an excuse to go out and answer the call. He was crying. He was thanking me for answering the call and I immediately felt bad about ignoring him. I told him I'm engaged and I don't like that he still says inappropriate things in chat and he promised he won't do it again. After this conversation, he changed. He wasn't spamming me anymore when I can't reply as soon as possible. Our conversations became more friendly and wasn't uncomfortable anymore. It was fine until he wanted to meet up again. I told him I can't because my boyfriend won't be comfortable with that, I told him about Mike, and that I don't have the time. I'm a med student. I believed he changed, but the last time we met was so awful that I'd rather not meet him again. He was very insistent about meeting up with him, which made me just want to never talk to him again. I stopped replying again. He wasn't spamming me, but one day he confessed his romantic feelings for me on Messenger. This was finally the straw that broke the camel's back. I blocked him everywhere. Unfortunately, it doesn't end there. I have a Tumblr. It's my safe haven and it's impossible to find me there, or so I thought. I had a regular Anon that was really friendly. When I blocked Mike on social media, this Anon suddenly changed. He revealed his identity, he was Mike, and he told me he'd end his own life if I don't meet up with him. He told me he's staying on my hometown and to meet up with me on my hometown's community park. I was so scared at this time that I told my fiancé and we contacted the authorities. I deleted my Tumblr and I never heard from him since. So, this is just one of those situations that is extremely sensitive. Like, I really do appreciate that you had sympathy for this guy, but he was very clearly interested in you, and if, if you didn't want that to keep going, like, I mean, I don't know what the strategy would have been, but it might have been a good idea to stop this earlier, but obviously, you know, we, we are humans, we tend to empathize with people and want to help them out when they feel alone, especially if we can relate to that sort of thing. But I am extremely glad that when he threatened to end his own life, you called the police instead of meeting up with him. I think that could have been really dangerous, he could have hurt himself anyway, he could have hurt you, it could have gone really badly, so hopefully he's okay, hopefully he's getting some 
freaking psychological help, and he's not gonna do anything like this again. Two important things. One, if you want to check out that wiki how to get girls, if you think that you might be a neckbeard, and you want to, you know, get some good tips for getting the women's, check out my live stream. Also, we just had fun with it. Like, it wasn't a serious thing at all. We weren't trying to actually be informed on how to do this stuff. But number two, my friend Walter Fate also makes neckbeard stories videos. So if you're craving some neckbeard stories, but you just don't get enough of it from me, check him out. I'm going to link his most recent video. I think he, like, just posted a neckbeard story video today so i'll link that in the comments as well skate on to the best of your abilities guys make sure you're drinking more water hope you're all doing well staying safe taking care of one another peace out cub scouts and i'll see you very soon